So to start off, we're going to start off with the, the Enneagram 1. Now, the 1 can be defined by a few different things. Uh, if we talk about what are the core attributes of a 1, what are the driving forces of being an Enneagram 1? Some of those fears that Enneagrams have that, that are core to driving them in relationships are uh, being wrong, being bad, being evil. They don't want to be viewed in these different ways, but but it's not even about perception necessarily, because a lot of it is also their own perception of themselves. Instead, their desire is to have integrity, to be ethical, to be balanced, to be accurate. Uh, ones a lot of times have just a very keen sense of right and wrong. Uh, they're very black and white a lot of times in their thinking because they want to make sure that they are on the right side of things because they don't want to be bad. They don't want to be evil. They don't want to be wrong. Instead, they want to make sure that they are uh, balanced, that they are ethical, that they have this integrity. And what ones are oftentimes long for, uh, oftentimes this is stemming from a ch childhood and family of origin and how we have been impacted by that, is to know that you are good. Uh, this is an internal battle. When we talk about core longings, these are internal struggles uh, that each one of these numbers will have in, in kind of believing about themselves. And so ones oftentimes want so bad to know that I am good, uh, which is why they are seeking out this integrity and seeking out this, this balance and, and trying to not be bad or wrong or evil. So to talk about the idea of reconciliation, we're going to look at it from a few different uh, angles here. The first angle uh, is in your relationship with others. So if you're here today and you are an Enneagram One, uh, I want to provide just a few different observations or, or uh, challenges or encouragements for you to think about as you are trying to reconciliate with others, as you are in relationships with others. The first is to extend grace, because oftentimes, again, you have this very black and white approach to things. Uh, not other numbers do necessarily. So trying to extend grace, trying to not hold uh, others to this this standard of this is the exact way of viewing things, uh, but instead allowing for a little bit of care and leniency. And, uh, and even, you know, when we talk about grace from a biblical standpoint, there's, there's a level of like the other person doesn't even necessarily deserve it in your, your opinion, but yet you're still going to offer this love and this care and this compassion. The second thing is if you are one and you're trying to uh, reconcile relationships, make sure to ask questions and not judgment statements. Um, oftentimes, it, by viewing the world in a very black and white manner, it is easy to just say uh, judgment statements and to say this is the way of thinking, uh, that, that other ways of thinking would be wrong. So it's important instead to make sure that you ask questions, that you are intrigued about the other uh, perspective on the situation, that you're able to listen. And, and that ties into this third one, which is to receive feedback without defensiveness. You know, again, going back to this very black and white approach to things, uh, Enneagram ones uh, oftentimes view their way as being right because there's so much trying to be in that, that mindset of being good. And so oftentimes it, it is easy, it, it is natural for ones to uh, respond to feedback with defensiveness because to them, they have put in all of these parameters, they've created all of these systems, they've uh, tried to find balance and find integrity in order to find themselves in the position of good or doing the right thing. And so if you are approaching them in a way, uh, talking through, uh, different uh, struggles or issues that you need to reconcile with, ones may very easily take that defensively because, again, they have uh, they've positioned themselves in such a way to to feel like they are in the right spot. So, uh, for ones as you are in a relationship, try not to be defensive. Try instead to to receive the feedback of others and hear the different perspectives on things. Now, if you are in relationship with one. So say you're married to one, you work with a one, you are uh, you're a one is your coworker. Here are two things that I would encourage you to do as you are trying to reconcile in different aspects of your relationship. First, make sure to take responsibility for your actions. 
you know, ones won't like it if you are trying to just abdicate your responsibility. If you're saying like, hey, it wasn't my fault if we're here making excuses. Uh, instead, owning up to your actions, owning up to where you made mistakes is, is incredibly important to, to reconciling with ones. The second is this, to be slow to speak with critique. Again, this goes back to some of the defensiveness uh, that, that ones naturally have, again, because they've created these guardrails in their system and they, uh, they think that they are, are living in the right way. And so if someone points out a way that maybe isn't the right way, that isn't the good way, uh, it will naturally lead to defensiveness. So uh, when you speak with critique, be careful with how you do that. Be, be cautious, be mindful that, that ones are trying so hard. To, to create this world in which they're doing the right thing. Um, realize that, see that, see that perspective. And then if you were able to offer the critique, be careful with how you do it. Um, do it in a way that they are able to hear it and not in a way that is, is going to lead them to uh, act out in defensiveness. Now, reconciliation also applies beyond just our relationship with others. It also applies to our relationship with ourselves. And, and so if we want to make sure that we are reconciling our perspective on ourselves, but also our, uh, our ability to reconcile with others, there's a few things that we can do. So as an Enneagram one, some ways that I would encourage you to take some time to do these things um, in order to reconcile yourself is, is first to see how God sees you, because he sees you as very good. We read it in the in the first book of the Bible in Genesis when God creates humans that when he created humans, he said that they were very good. He said all of these other things that he had made were good, but that humans were very good. So first and foremost, it's important for you as Enneagram ones to remember that you are seen through God's eyes as very good. And not just that, but go through the rest of scripture. See, see what God calls you to, see how God views you. Um, take some time and study in, in books like the book of First John, where uh, you are a child of God, you are beloved, you are you are loved, that you are uh, a royal priesthood. There, there's all of these different languages, or all of these different terms and attributes that that apply to how God views us, and, and allow those things to seep in and enforce how you perceive yourself. Because how you perceive yourself will then ultimately translate into these relationships of reconciliation. The third one is, you know, feed, create a small community that is trusted and get feedback from them. It is incredibly difficult to receive feedback or critique from uh, communities that are not trusted or from people that don't have the right in your opinion to speak into your life. So instead, make sure that you have created uh, a, a sort of community where you can almost practice this, where, where you can go to them and you can say, hey, would you give me some feedback? Will you help me see what I'm missing? Will you give me some encouragement for what I am doing good? Um, this will help build your sense of confidence in your ability to handle this critique when it does come. Uh, and it allows you to then receive feedback in, the, in a better way outside of these trusted communities.